The husband of a missing mother of three searched online about how to dispose of a 115 pound woman's body. That's according to two law enforcement sources yeah. who shared the information with CNN. Goodness. Well, that's just one of the disturbing re new revelations about the disappearance of Ann Walsh. You can see a picture over there. Her husband, Brian Walsh, he has now been charged with misleading authorities. CNN's Jason Carroll is live in Cohasset, Massachusetts. So, so, so Jason, we're also learning that authorities were searching two uh, locations last night. I, I wonder, do we, do we know the significance of those searches? Well, they could end up being uh, very, very significant. It's still early on in this investigation, but as you were saying, uh, much of that uh, search and that investigation shifted here from the home in Cohasset uh, to two facilities. One last night at a trash facility uh, in North Boston. That's where investigators, Jim, spent hours uh, combing through some of the garbage there, looking for more evidence in their case. In addition to that, uh, yesterday, uh, late afternoon, early evening, they also spent some time uh, sitting through the rubbish at a dumpster outside of Walsh's, uh, his mother's home, uh, searching that facility there as well. All this as uh, sources tell CNN that investigators also found very disturbing internet searches that uh, Walsh had conducted following his wife's disappearance, which included how to dispose of a 115 uh, pound body and also how to dismember a body. And incredibly disturbing details about this case, which we also heard yesterday uh, in court during Walsh's arraignment, where prosecutors uh, laid out uh, what they say investigators found at the home. He's on surveillance at that time, purchasing about $450 worth of cleaning supplies. That would include mops, bucket, tops, um, TVEX, uh, drop cloths, uh, as well as various kinds of tape. Blood was found in the basement area, as well as a knife, which also contained some blood. During the time frame when he didn't report his wife and gave various statements, that allowed him time to either clean up evidence. And uh, we should also tell you that reached out to the district attorney's office, talking to them this morning, Jim and Erica, expecting to get some more information possibly about their case that should be happening later today. Again, at this point, Walsh has just been charged with misleading police. We'll see if that changes in the near future. Also, I should point out, I spoke to a friend of Anna Walsh on, on the phone, a man by the name of uh, Peter Kirby. He told me, as you can expect, they are extremely devastated, he says, by all of the developments that they've been hearing about in the news. He said at this point, their focus is on Anna's three small children. Joining us now, Deborah Norville, the host of Inside Edition, which is, by the way, celebrating its 35th anniversary. Congratulations for that. Deborah. it's always good to see you. I wish we were talking about something better, but good morning. thank you so much for joining us. Good morning, absolutely. Your reaction to this news, especially in the context of its proximity to um, the place Brian Walsh told investigators he had visited? Yeah, this is um, a case that's developing pretty quickly um, now that authorities are actually having the opportunity to investigate it. The big news overnight, it's being reported that evidence linked to the disappearance of animals was found at that garbage transfer facility in Peabody. That's the latest place where cops have been looking. Across the board, the story that Brian Walsh has told investigators since his wife was last seen by someone outside the family on New Year's Eve, actually about 1.30 in the morning on January 1st, has simply not added up to what the facts are that they're developing. They had had a friend over for dinner. The friend left about 1.30 in the morning. The friend says everything was just fine. Brian Walsh told investigators that his wife had to suddenly go to Washington, D.C., where she worked as a real estate executive on January 1st, and then later didn't show up to work. She wasn't reported missing until January 4th. It's what happened between January 1st and January 4th that investigators are looking at, and they're able to follow the movements of Brian Walsh because he was already under house arrest mm -hmm. for a federal fraud case for which he was awaiting sentencing. During that period, he went to, as Prosecutors told the judge in court yesterday he went to a Home Depot where he wore surgical gloves, had on a 
a COVID mask and paid cash for $450 worth of cleaning supplies. That fact really got investigators' attention. They then were able to do a search of the gentleman's home, and that's where they found not only the bloody knife in the basement, but also blood in the basement, presumably Efforts would be made to clean that up. That hadn't happened yet. And subsequent to that, they got the arrest warrant for impeding the investigation because statements Brian Walsh made did not back up to the facts that they had from uh, surveillance that they were doing. What about the Google searches, Deborah? How specific they were when the they Google were made? Searches yeah. The Google search is very troubling. I can't tell you exactly when that Google search was made. That hasn't been reported. This is actually a source that CNN has uh, that developed this information. But there were two things that were troubling to investigators. Not only did he look up, allegedly, how to dispose of a 115-pound woman, he also allegedly looked up how to dismember a body. And this is yet another example of, you know, we've all seen these crime cases where you have to wonder, don't people who are contemplating committing crimes realize the digital footprint they leave behind is impossible to erase. They will be discovered if they have looked these things up. Yeah, that's what we were talking about this morning, the, the fact that those are the searches that have been found here and the evidence. He has been you know, charged but just with misleading investigators. Do you think that's just uh, in order to hold him and as they are figuring out more things, learning about you know, the actions he took and where he was in the days after her disappearance? Exactly. And it also puts a pin on any other actions that he might be contemplating taken. As we said, there was blood in the basement of the family home. Um, if you have committed a crime, that is something you would want to get rid of. I was surprised when the prosecutor was detailing the items that were purchased at Home Depot. If these were the actions of a guilty individual, you would think you'd be purchasing cleaning supplies, including bleach or something to actually get rid of any DNA material that may be there. I should note that we don't yet know what the results of the DNA testing on that bloody knife might be, but that's something that investigators are obviously working right now to try to develop. Hey, yeah. Deborah, you know, we do these stories and we focus on the clues and who the suspect is. We have to remember there are families involved and friends and loved ones who are waiting to, f to find out what happened to this, this woman, and they're all... And those children, know, going three through. children. Absolute there, hell right now. Yeah. There are three little boys, and it's interesting. Uh, the woman is, the missing woman is from Serbia, and her mother has granted an interview and says that her daughter called her just after Christmas and asked her to please come to America to visit. She said, I'm 69 years old. I can't move on the dime. I've got to get my medication, et cetera. She now has expressed regret that mm. she didn't um, oh, honor wow. that request and get to this right away. Yeah. You're right. There's families involved.